Um, I met with many of you this morning, so I appreciate you coming back on such short notice. Um, today is an important day for the Police Bureau, and I want to start out by thanking many people. First, and especially to the men and women of the Portland Police Bureau who have embraced change over the course of several years. Change is not always easy, and we have made substantial changes over the years, which means Bureau members have had to learn new skills, be open to critique, be held accountable at an increased level, and continuously strive to improve. Also internally, I would like to thank, I would like to thank the PPD, PPB DOJ Compliance Team, as well as members of our Professional Standards Division, Training Division, Community Engagement Unit, Strategic Services, Policy Team, and countless Bureau members who have worked tirelessly on many initiatives which have made us successful. I'd like to express my appreciation to the members of the Department of Justice assigned to the settlement agreement and the Portland Compliance Officer Community Liaison, our partners at the City Attorney's Office, and U.S. Attorney Billy Williams and his staff. To our community, thank you. Thank you for working with us often through difficult conversations. Your input and support throughout these changes and moving forward are critical to our success. Oftentimes, I feel as though these changes are reported as PPP versus the community, when in fact it is a collaborative effort. Through our work with the Department of Justice and with the community, we have made significant changes to the Police Bureau. These changes have increased our ability to hold ourselves accountable and to assess our own performance and to see where we need to make further changes moving forward. The changes we have accomplished will continue to have positive impacts directly in our community. There are many, many critical and important accomplishments, but I want to highlight a few. We made substantial changes to many of our policies, including our use of force policy. We implemented those changes only after significant feedback from our community. We also changed the process to review and revise our policies and to increase transparency and provide greater opportunity for public input. We made, training, we made changes in training as well. While we already provided and continue to provide every officer with crisis intervention training, we added de-escalation, equity, implicit bias, and procedural justice classes for all officers. We also created a specialized group of volunteer officers who have received enhanced crisis intervention training and who respond with specific, to specific calls involving those experiencing mental health crisis. We created the Behavioral Health Unit with mobile teams pairing an officer with a trained clinician from Project Respond to work proactively with individuals experiencing mental illness who have multiple or high risk contacts with police. We restructured and expanded our accountability systems, creating a force inspector and adding force auditors who now audit all uses of force. Additionally, we track and audit all use of force invol involving persons experiencing mental illness or a mental health crisis. Those functions are now overseen by an inspector general who reports directly to the chief of police. Internal affairs investigations are also more timely and the majority are now resolved within 180 days. We have increased our transparency. On our website, we provide quarterly reports on force for anyone to read. We also have an interactive dashboard, historical reports, and summaries of officer-involved shootings, including investigative files and grand jury transcripts. A common misconception is that substantial compliance with the settlement agreement will result in zero officer-involved shootings. Being in compliance means that we have done everything to minimize using force on those experiencing mental illness. We will continue to seek ways to minimize the use of deadly force, particularly in interactions with those people experiencing mental illness, and we share the community's desire to reduce and ideally avoid all uses of deadly force. It is also true that police officers must be prepared, must be prepared to protect others and themselves in dangerous, dynamic, and chaotic situations. This sometimes means officers find themselves in situations where they have to use deadly force to protect themselves or others. We take any use of deadly force extremely seriously and all such uses of force are thoroughly investigated. For example, when a use of deadly force results in death or serious injury, we conduct a criminal investigation and forward the case to the Multnomah County District Attorney's Office for consideration to convene a grand jury to determine if there is any crime related to the officer's actions. We also have a robust internal administration review process, which includes civilian participation to determine if the officer's conduct was within policy. In addition, all officer-involved shootings are, subjected, are subject to an external audit by OIR group, and we take their recommendations for improvement very seriously. We understand that we are here to serve all Portlanders, and we cannot effectively do that if we do not have a relationship with the members in the community. We are committed to widespread and meaningful community engagement, especially at a time when many people in our community feel vulnerable. We created a community engagement plan with goals and strategy, strategies. This includes reaching out to historically marginalized communities, as well as building back up many of our advisory groups. 
We are grateful to the Portland Committee on Community Engaged Policing for their contribution to our community engagement plan, and we will continue to seek their advice and feedback. Substantial compliance is a great accomplishment, but as mentioned, our work is not done. There is no finish line. I have, been to, I have been asked countless times by community members I have met since my promotion, what do you need and how can we help? This is my answer. Publicly support us, engage with us, do not rush to judgment, help us promote the excellent work of the Portland Police Bureau and recruit the next generation of officers. And I will continue to commit to working together on what our community wants and expects of its Police Bureau. Thank you.